I'm going to show you how I do it. This is a different uh, workflow today. I'm using DxO Photo Lab 4. I have an image already completed that I've completed in DxO Photo Lab 4. I'm going to send that out of Photo Lab 4 into the newly updated 25th anniversary Nick collection. And I'll be using Color Effects Pro 4. I'm going to use a new recipe from the special uh, 25th anniversary recipe collection. Then I'm going to send that image back into PhotoLab 4. And then out of PhotoLab 4, we'll send it to Topaz Studio 2, turn it into a painting, bring it back into uh, PhotoLab 4. So it's going to be really interesting. Like I said, it's a different workflow. Oh, and by the way, in the description below, you'll find affiliate links for uh, the Nick collection, as well as DxO Photo Lab 4 and Topaz products. And then, then on Topaz products, you can save 15% off of all Topaz products, including uh, license upgrades and bundles and things like that. When you use my affiliate links, I make a small commission. It really helps me out, helps me keep my channel going and helps me keep these uh, videos coming to you. And I really appreciate it when you use my affiliate links. And I want to thank you in advance for that. But hey, without any further ado, let's get started. I'm starting out inside of PhotoLab 4, inside of a project called uh, PL4 Nick TS2 Digital Art, a project that I made. Move this image in here. This is an image that I've already completed. So here it is, and I renamed it. It's in this collection. Now what I want to do is send it into the Nick collection. I just click on Nick collection and now a list of filters comes up here. These are all the Nick collection filters. I'm interested in Color Effects Pro 4, so I click that. And a second or two here will be brought into Color Effects Pro 4. Now once we're inside of Color Effects Pro 4, you'll notice it remembers the last thing you've done. So I'm going to X out of that filter right there. Today we're working with recipes and you'll notice I'm in recipes under 25th anniversary. I'm going to go back and you see all these different recipes on Vogue. I'm going to click on that. There's some really cool recipes in here and that comes, that's part of the DxO uh, Nick collection. They added those, but now they've added these 25th anniversary recipes, which there are some really cool ones in here. And we're going to look at some of these. Here's one I'm going to look at, Light and Bright Cafe Mocha. So I'm going to click on that, and you can see now there's a bunch of different filters. or a couple filters involved with that one. Here's another one called Light and Bright uh, Fade Away. And uh, I'm looking for a certain filter here that I really want to use today. And it's not this one, but this one's called Wildlife Soft and Dreamy. And that looks really cool. I like that one. Got some glamour glow on it. But here's the one I want. Wildlife Cool Evening. Now, when we look to the right, we see all these different filters that are attached to this recipe here. Now, I like to shut one of the, each one of these filters off one at a time, like duplex, so I can see what it's doing. And yeah, I do like the effects. And here's the different controls that we can work with. But I'm not going to touch those. Dark and light and center. Before and after. Yeah, I like that one. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Now, here's Glamour Glow, one of my favorites. And that's doing a really nice effect. Now, let me go ahead and open up Glamour Glow and play with some of the controls in here. There's a glow adjustment here. You can add more of that dreamy glow or less. You can adjust the saturation. You can adjust the color warmth if you want to make the image warmer. You can warm it up, move it, move the slider to the right, or cool it down by moving the slider to the left. Just adjust it to where you like it. And uh, I always stop at the point where I say, yeah, man, that looks really, really cool. Okay. There's one thing I'm noticing, and the sky looks a little bit blue to me, so I'm not happy with that. So I'm going to go to the Pro, Contra Pro Contrast Filter, shut that off. Yeah, that's where that blue's coming from. So what I'm going to do is use negative control points and click, and that eliminates that effect from the sky right there. Okay, now I'm holding the Option or Alt key down and dragging, and that's making new control points. I'll do some in-depth tutorials on control points, but this is a fast tutorial today, but I just want to show you some of the effects we can do because we're doing a lot today, and that looks really cool. When I do a before and after, you can see how those control points have effective, effectively targeted that sky. Nick control points are really cutting edge technology. Hey, 25 years and they're still amazing. I'm going to click save and that'll send us right back into PhotoLab 4. Notice how my uh, Nick image is sitting right beside the original image. Next, I'll right click on the image and send it to the project that I put the original image in. Now let's go ahead and go to that project. So let's come up to photo library, click on that and come the whole way down to the bottom of the list of files under projects. And we'll click on that project 
and there are my two images. Next, I'll double click on my Nick image and that opens up the editor. And now I need to send this to uh, Topaz Studio too. So I'm gonna click export to application. All right, and there's a list of all of your different applications that you've recently used. If it's not there, click select an application and you can point your browser to wherever that application is. In my case, I already have it in my list, which is Topaz Studio 2. Click export and that will send us right into Topaz Studio 2. And here we are. As you recall, I said I wanted to use the impression filter. So let's go to add filter and come down to our stylistic filters and click on impression. I'm not going to do a whole lot in here. I have a bunch of different YouTube tutorials showing you how I use the impression filter. So go back and watch some of those. The only thing I'm going to do here, one of the few things is adjust the brush size, make it smaller. And you notice when I pull it back, I'm starting to see all these little flecks showing through here. And we really don't want those. So Grab this slider and drag it to the bottom. Come under texture and keep dragging down and see where it says original. Click on that and those little white flecks magically go away. Like I said, I'm not going to do too much in impression today, but I really want to play around with something I haven't used too much on my tutorials and that's color. So let's go into color because I think color can really help this image out here. Now you'll notice when I hover over these different blocks of color, you'll see these little red dashed lines letting you know where these colors are sitting at. So I'm going to play with these colors. I'm going to go with red first, give it some extra saturation. Yeah, and see how it's just pulling some of those reds out and, and I'm going to try the lightness, you know, darken it, lighten it, see which direction it needs to go in. And then I'm going to play around with some other different colors here. So that was red, and we'll get that saturation looking just the way we like it. And we can also play with the hue if we wanted to. So you can get really creative here and have a lot of fun. You know, this is all part of the joy of editing. It's having fun with your images. So by all means, play with these sliders. Don't be afraid to pull them around. You're not going to hurt anything. Now let's go to another color here. And let's pull up its saturation and see what colors we're targeting here. Okay, so... That's working with more of the orange colors. Let's play with its lightness. We can darken it. We can lighten it and see what kind of a direction we, that we want to go with with that color. But again, this is where the fun comes in. Now let's look at a different color here. Work with the saturation. No, that one's not doing so much. So I'm just going to double click it and reset it. Now we're working with greens. Now this is going to make my grass look nuclear green. Hey, and if you like that look, make it nuclear green. But I'm going to go ahead and play around with this saturation and put it to where I think it looks best. And uh, again, this is where it's at. Now I'm going to click this next color, which is aquas. And let's pull that aqua saturation up. Yeah. And I think I might pull that aqua saturation up a bit. I'm going both ways just to see which way it looks the best. Now let's play with its lightness. We can lighten it up. Man, there's a lot of aqua in this image here. So let's find the spot that really looks good. All right. I am just not satisfied yet. But now I think I've got it. Now let's go ahead and move on to blues. Okay, so let me click it. Go ahead and click it, Dave. Pull that blue saturation up and see what you get. Now, yeah, see, that's really affecting that sky. So if you want that sky to go really blue, you can go ahead and pull that up. And I think I might just give it a little bit of extra blue saturation in that sky right there. Now let's click our global block. Let's think globally. Let's pull up the entire global saturation of the image. Yeah, and I'm liking the look there, but I don't like the sky. The sky's going really, really blue, and I don't like it that blue, but hey, we can remedy that. Let's click on that blue block, and let's pull that blue saturation back a bit and get it just where we want. But you can really have a good time adjusting color with that HSL color adjustment. Now we're going to add another filter, and I always like using the precision contrast filter. I'm only using one control here, and that's the micro contrast control. I'm pulling it up. Now, I don't like the effect that's happening on the entire image, but I'm only thinking on the foreground trees and possibly the grass. But I'm going to use a uh, layer masking technique to just put those, put that contrast just where I want it. So I'm clicking on the layer masking icon, clicking on a brush, which now nah, actually I shouldn't have clicked that. I should have inverted first. So I went ahead and inverted. Now I'm going to click on a brush, shut my edge aware off, and change my radius to the proper radius and adjust my softness accordingly. And now let me make a mistake by painting black paint over the areas I want to reveal and nothing's going to show through because, hey Dave, guess what? You're painting with black paint and you don't want to do that. 
So go to transparency and move your transparency the whole way to the right. Now you're painting with white paint. And yes, now you're going to be happy because once you let up on your brush, you'll see that detail start to show through. But isn't that cool how it just shows through in the isolated areas that I reveal back in? Now I'm going to paint these foreground trees here. I think they're like pine trees. The, with the impression, it's kind of hard to tell with the impression filter here. But I really like the way they look. And I don't want to leave this little bush or tree out right in here. Now, what I can do is vary my uh, transparency here to uh, apply a different amount of that effect. So I'm pulling the transparency back so it'll let less of that uh, detail show through. But detail will still show through. See right there? And I'm gonna also, I'll also paint on the foreground grass here. Let's try that amount right there, that gray color on there. See how much that reveals through. Not bad, but I want a little bit more, so I'll move that transparency a little more to the right. That'll let a little bit more of that detail show through on the grass. I don't want it too detailed, but, you know, I want a little bit more detail showing through. And, yeah, I think that is looking really, really good. So let's uh, shut that eye off. So there's a before and there's an after. But you see how effective that little bit of extra detail is? And using the uh, layer masking technique is really helpful. Now we're going to go back to the impression filter and what if we add a little bit of uh, canvas texture to this image here. So we'll come down and we'll come to texture and I'm going to choose, uh, I think it's canvas 2 right here. So I'm going to click on that and I always like to zoom way in when I do this, pull the strength up. You can see that canvas shows through and it's really realistic canvas and I really love it. It does a great job. But hey, it's a painting so let's add a little bit of texture. Let's zoom back out and I think that looks really really good. Now let's come back up and let's just examine some of the strokes. Now I, I didn't change the strokes at the beginning, but let's go through some of the different strokes and see if there's a stroke that we really, really enjoy. So I'm just going to go ahead and click through some of these and see what we get here. But this is all part of having fun. You know, take your time, play some music, have some fun, uh, drink some coffee, drink some wine, whatever you like. But I think I like stroke two. So I'm going to uh, go to one. Uh, do I like one or do I like two? Decisions, decisions. But you got to stop at some point and choose something. Boy, I can't get my mind off of one or two. I'm going to leave it at one. I'm happy. I'm going to go ahead and click accept. Once I click accept, that'll bring us back into PhotoLab 4. And here we are back in PhotoLab 4, and my three images are living side by side inside of the original folder. Here's the original image I started out with. Then, if, as you'll recall, I sent this into uh, ColorFX Pro 4 and ended up with this image. I used that new uh, recipe in the 25th anniversary. And I liked the way it looked, but I thought, hey, it kind of looks like a painting. So then I said... Well, let's go ahead and turn it into a painting. So I took this image, sent it into Topaz Studio 2, and ended up with this image after I added the impression filter on it. And now it's all neatly back inside of PhotoLab 4. Now I went ahead and put these three images into a collection. And to find your collections, all you need to do, or projects, is come up to Photo Library, and your projects live at the very bottom of the list here. And just find the project that you're looking for, and mine is this one right here. So I'm going to click on it, and you'll see my three images are living inside of here. Now, we started out with this one right here. And then we added uh, ColorFX Pro 4 to it, ended up with this, and I thought it looks really cool. But then we sent it into Topaz Studio 2, and we end up with this image right here. Now, if you click right here in this icon, you can see this as a full screen. So let's view this as a full screen view. And this information down here... If you don't want to see that, this little triangle right here pointing downward, just give that a click and that information goes away. And to bring it back up, just click it again and it'll come back up. Okay, but there's our image and I think it turned out really nice. I like it as a painting. What do you think? Please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Well, there it is, everyone. We started out in PhotoLab 4, moved into the Nick collection right from PhotoLab 4, and then we moved into Topaz Studio 2 right from PhotoLab 4. So as you can see, this is a great uh, workflow, uh, all hinging around DxO PhotoLab 4. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. 
If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.